this video, I'm going to show how to do derivatives of natural logarithms. Now in the top right here, I have a graph of the function f of x is equal to ln of x. And I'm going to jump right into what the derivative rule for ln of x is. If y is equal to ln of x, then dy by dx is going to be equal to 1 over x. Thus, for the function f of x is equal to ln of x that we have right here, the derivative f prime of x will be 1 over x. Let's look at a few different x values to see how this applies to this graph. First, let's look at when x is equal to 0.2, a pretty small x value. If x is equal to 0.2, then f prime of x is going to be equal to 1 over x is equal to 0.2 is equal to 5. Thus, the slope here at x is equal to 0.2 is going to be 5 with a rise of 5 and a run of 1. Now let's look at when x is equal to 1. Here f prime of x will be 1 over our x value of 1, giving us a slope of 1. So now our rise over run will be 1 to 1. Let's look at one more point. How about x is equal to 4? Here f prime of x is going to be equal to 1 divided by 4 or 0 0.25. Thus here our slope will be a rise of 1 to a run of 4. Looking at these results, we can see that they are consistent with what we see in the graph, that we start with a large slope for our small x values, and the slope decreases as our x values get larger. So our, our derivative rule for logarithms is consistent with what we see in the graph. If we have a function y is equal to ln of x, then the derivative is 1 over x. Now let's try using this derivative rule for a few examples. Example 1. What is the derivative of f of x is equal to ln of x plus 3 over x? First thing I'm going to do is recognize that I have two terms separated by addition, so I can use the sum difference rule. Thus, f prime of x is the derivative of the first term, ln of x, plus the derivative of the second term, 3 over x. Next, I'm going to do the derivative of each of these terms separately. For the derivative of ln of x, I get 1 over x. For 3 over x, I can rewrite this as 3 times x to the power of negative 1. Thus, the derivative becomes 3 times negative 1 times x to the power of negative 1 minus 1, or negative 2. I can rewrite all of this as f prime of x is equal to 1 over x minus 3x to the power of negative 2. And that will be my final answer. So, so far, not so bad. Let's try another one that's a little bit trickier. Example 2. What is the derivative of f of x is equal to ln of 5x squared? In this expression, I have ln of 5x squared, not just ln of x. So I can't use the derivative rule I have here. What I'm going to have to do is adjust this expression such that I have something in the form of ln of x. And then, and only then, will I be able to use the derivative rule I have here. Doing this will require me going back to the rules we went over in pre-calc regarding logarithmic functions. The first of these rules I'm going to use here is the product rule of logarithms right here. If you have the logarithm that is the product of two values, m and n, it can be rewritten as the sum of two logarithms, log of m and log of n. So in our example here, we have the product of 5, we'll make that our m, and x squared, we'll make that our n. Thus, this can be rewritten as ln of 5, our m value, plus ln of x squared, our n value. Now we're closer to the form we want, but not quite there. We still have this exponent 2 when we want just ln of x with no exponents. So now I'm going to use the power rule of logarithms right here, where the log of m to the power of p is equal to p, the exponent, times log of m. In this case, m would be my base x, and p would be the exponent 2. So I can rewrite my expression for f of x, first with the ln of 5, 
And now this second term can be rewritten as 2 times ln of x. Now I finally have my expression in the form ln of x and I can use the derivative rule for ln of x. Doing this derivative now, I can see that I've got the sum of two different terms, so I can use the sum difference rule. So I'm going to have the derivative of ln of 5 plus the derivative of 2 ln of x. Now the derivative of ln of 5, this is simply a constant and the derivative of a constant is 0. Thus, I have 0 plus for the second term, I'm going to first use a scalar rule where I have a function multiplied by a scalar. The derivative is the same as the scalar times the derivative of that function, ln of x. Now I have 2 times the derivative of ln of x, which is simply 1 over x. Last step, I'm going to simplify this expression. So I now have f prime of x is 2 over x, my final answer. Here's our next example. What is the derivative of f of x is equal to ln of 8x cubed minus ln of 2x? So again, in this example, we don't have our derivative in the form of ln of x, so we're going to have to do some manipulation to isolate ln of x. Now there's a couple of different ways I could do this derivative. The first approach, let's call it approach A, I could recognize that this is the difference between two functions of x, so I could use the sum difference rule and do the derivative of ln of 8x cubed first and then subtract the derivative of ln of 2x. That's a perfectly acceptable approach. The second approach one could take is to simplify this function first, to combine the logarithms and simplify it first and then do the derivatives. This is the approach I'm going to use here. But like I said before, that first approach of using the sum difference rule would have been perfectly acceptable as well. So now to combine these derivatives, I'm going to use the quotient rule of logarithms first, where we have log of m over n is going to be equal to the log of m minus the log of n. Here I have ln of 8x cubed, we'll make that my m, minus ln of 2x, we'll make that the n. And this can be further simplified to be ln of 4x squared. Now this still isn't in the form that I want, but it is a simplified version. I won't have to do the sum, I won't have to use the sum difference rule to do the derivative, and the derivative should be in a nice clean form when we're done. From here, this question is a lot like our previous question, where I'm going to manipulate ln of 4x squared until I can isolate ln of x. So first I'm going to use the product rule, recognizing that I'm doing the logarithm of the product of 4 and x squared. So this is going to become ln of 4 plus ln of x squared. Next I'm going to address the x squared using the power rule of logarithms. So I still have ln of 4, and now this ln of x squared becomes my exponent 2 times the ln of x. Now I'm ready to use my logarithm rule of derivatives. So I have f prime of x is going to be the derivative of ln of 4. This is a constant, so this is going to be 0, plus the derivative of 2 ln of x. Using the scalar rule, I'm going to have 2 times the derivative of ln of x, which is simply 1 over x. I can then simplify this and write this as f prime of x is equal to 2 over x. And that will be my final answer. Now I have one more example for us where we're going to have a logarithm with a different base than e. Oh dear. So here's our last example. What is the derivative of f of x is equal to log base 10 of 12x cubed? Now the derivative rule we have is for ln of x, meaning a log with the base e, not log base 10. So for this example, what we're going to have to do is use the change of base rule to bring this back to a natural logarithm. So the change of base rule from our pre-calc module states that log base a of b is equal to ln of b over ln of a. So to use the change of base rule, we're going to take 
what's in the brackets in front of our logarithm, that's going to be ln of b, and divide that by ln of the base of the logarithm. So in this case, what's in front of our logarithm, 12x cubed, is going to be our b, and the base of our logarithm, 10, is going to be our a. So using the change of base rule, I'm going to have f of x is equal to the ln of the b term, 12x cubed, divided by ln of our base, 10. This can be rewritten as 1 over ln of 10 times ln of 12x cubed. That's simply pulling the denominator out as a fraction in front of the numerator. So now I have the scalar 1 over ln of 10 in front of ln of 12x cubed. From here, it's going to be very much like our previous examples, where I'm going to use the product rule and the power rule to manipulate this logarithm of 12x cubed to form ln of x. Doing that, I'm going to have 1 over ln of 10 times, now doing our manipulation of ln of 12x cubed, first using the product rule, where I have the product of 12 and x cubed, I'm going to get ln of 12 plus ln of x cubed. Now multiplying 1 over ln of 10 into the brackets, I'm going to have 1 over ln of 10 times ln of 12 plus 1 over ln of 10. Now ln of x cubed, I'm going to rewrite right away using our power rule. It's the same as 3 times ln of x. And I can take this one step further and put that 3 into the numerator and have this as 3 over ln of 10 times ln of x. So now I have rewritten my expression so that everything's in terms of natural logarithms. Moreover, I also have the ln of x term for which I know how to do the derivative. So now I can do the derivative of this function. And I'm going to have f prime of x is equal to, now this first term, 1 over ln of 10 times ln of 12, those are just constants that being multiplied. So I'm going to end up with a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0 plus, now this 3 over ln of 10 is a scalar in front of ln of x. So I'm just going to pull that out, 3 over ln of 10, and then I'm going to do the derivative of ln of x, and that's simply 1 over x. Now my last step is to simplify this. I'm going to rewrite this, multiplying those values in my numerator, I get 3, and multiplying the values in the denominator, I get x times ln of 10. And there's my final expression. So when doing the derivative of a logarithm with a different base than the natural logarithm, I'm going to use the change of base rule to bring it back to the natural logarithm. And from there, it's just like doing any other natural logarithm derivative. Perhaps I'm going to need to do some manipulating still, just like we did here, but it's going to be just like our other examples.